Hey guys, Brian here. What's up? It's been a while since I've been here, but we're going to get back at it. Today we've got a fun install for you. We are installing the new Ranger Point Precision Gen 2 handguard. It's a one-piece unit versus the multi-piece that they had before, and we're going to be installing it on the brand new Marlin 1895 Trapper. So guys, this is a super simple, quick and easy install. The thing that takes the most time is hand lapping the tenon to get it into the dovetail, generally speaking, but uh, really quick and easy install, so let's get to it. First thing we're gonna do is make sure our rifle is unloaded. It is, rifle's clear. So now, I'm gonna drop the hammer. I'm gonna get that rest out of the way. We're gonna flip the gun over. We're gonna remove the two screws that hold the end cap on and the magazine tube screw. So let's get to it. First off, we will start with the end cap screws. Two simple screws to remove. Hardest part is when you have no fingernails, getting a hold of them. Okay, drop that in my parts bin. And I will get the second screw. And we'll switch bits to a broader bit and we're gonna get that magazine tube screw. For this one, I'll bring the rest back in and rest the rifle on just so the rifle doesn't move around on me while I do this. Okay, now that that's out, all we gotta do is pick up on this. There is spring tension in this magazine tube, so this end cap will want to fly off. You wanna hold on to it when you lift. Pry up a little bit, and now that's out, and there's our magazine spring. So now, we're just gonna wiggle on this magazine tube. It's gonna be kinda tight in here. As you can see, the handguard comes right up and off easy, but it's attached to the magazine tube because of the channel cut in it. We'll pull that out. And when we pull it out, I will rotate the magazine tube and I can pull the handguard off. And the reason you've got this bulge in the side of the mag tube is so that when you insert rounds into the loading gate, they have somewhere to go to round around and go into the mag tube. Otherwise it would just dead in into a hard brick wall and wouldn't go anywhere. Now that we've got the handguard off, we're going to remove the end cap. We're not going to need that either. Okay. And now I'll set the rest of that aside. Now our next step is gonna be removing the tenon. I'm gonna put an armorer's block under the barrel and use that to cradle the rifle. And fortunately, it's got a nice barrel channel cut out in the back side, and that's where I'll rest it. And then I will take a Delrin punch that I got off of Excess Sight's website. It's only like four or $5. This thing has been invaluable, guys. I use it for everything I possibly can. It's a non-marring uh, product, so I can beat on it. It hasn't torn up yet. It's getting a little flattened out like a crayon, but it works extremely well. Definitely worth the investment. So now I've got my Delrin punch and I'm going to drive out this existing tenon because we have to install the Ranger Point tenon that is a much larger, beefier, and stainless tenon. So let's get to it. Guys, I gotta say, this is one of the best jobs I've seen from the factory of a tenon being inset into the barrel. The ones from Remington would literally just fall out at times depending on the gun. So this is extremely well done and it's gonna take some work to get out. And there it goes. <laughs> All right, so that landed behind me. I finally found it and uh, that was definitely in there, no doubt about it. They did an excellent job putting that in there. It was not gonna come out easily. So kudos to Marlin and Ruger for doing that right. Now, what we've gotta do is take our new tenon and get it in there. And actually, it's a very tight fit. So we're gonna to have to do some hand lapping to get that fit. And for the lapping, what I do is you can get wet, dry sandpaper. I've got uh, some gator. I'm gonna use here, I've already been using. And then I've got some new 3M wet dry if I need it. And this is a 600 grit paper. And you'll get some oil. That one's very heavily worn, so I'm gonna get a new sheet. Uh, the more worn it is, longer it's gonna take you. I don't want this to take forever. So, start out with a new sheet. They cost about a dollar a sheet, guys. It's not too bad, you can get it at any big box store, any big, big box hardware store. and. Uh, just put a drop of oil on that paper. Kind of spread it around with your finger. And then you take your tenon and just start going in circular motions. This is not a fast process. You work it a little, 
test fit. Work it a little, test fit. So take your time, do a little bit. I'm not gonna make you watch this entire thing and bore you with it. I'm gonna get it set to fit and then we'll move forward from there. So happy sanding. Okay guys, after quite a bit of sanding, I uh, had one fairly used sheet and I switched over to another and just did some long quick strokes and worked out pretty well. So now, uh, now I get to drive it in the gun. And you've got to be very careful here because if you have it too tight and you think it's going to go, I have bent these in the past just because you're pounding way too hard on them. So just keep that in mind. It's going to be a very, very snug fit or a very loose fit, depending on how close you get the tolerances. But I've got mine good. All right, guys, I've got mine as a very, very, very tight fit. Don't want it moving around on me, and it looks to be centered. So now, next up is reassemble the rifle with the handguard on it. So this is the point where you could have blue Loctited it, and you can also stake it. I'm not going to do either because, as you guys know, if you follow the channel, these guns change around a lot. So I'm definitely not going to lock tight it and I'm not going to stake it because I don't want to make it any more difficult to get out than it already is. I don't want to beat on the rifle any more than I have to. Okay guys, next step is to get the handguard installed on the rifle. Make sure obviously you have the tenon end facing the receiver so it will mate up. Other end is open. It won't do any good. So what we're going to do is have to install this mag tube into the handguard, as I mentioned earlier. You can have the mag spring and follower out or you can have it in if you want. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it in and the mag tube will only go one way. You've got a larger opening and a smaller opening on the end of the mag tube where the stud will go in. It goes in the larger side. So you wanna have it oriented as such. And like I said, this bulge on here keeps the handguard from passing over. So we've got to get that inserted into the handguard, just like this. And you wanna rotate it so that the stud will inset into the mag tube. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna drop it down on here push the mag tube into place. And then once we've got the mag tube in place and we know that'll go, we have to work the handguard into place. And then it is a nice tight fit right over that giant tenon that we just installed. And that's what helps keep this thing very rigid, very solid. And one addition they've made or four additions they've made to this handguard over the Gen 1 would be little tensioning screws. And these little tensioning screws go in four locations on the handguard. You have one on either side at the rear of the handguard and one on either side up where the screws go into the tenon. And that helps keep any wobble out because some people have having issues. I think a lot of what people would have issues with in this situation that would create wobble would be not setting your tenon at the proper tautness, not, uh, you know, they sanded it too far. So it would be loose. And if they didn't stake it properly or blue Loctite it or, you know, rock set it, whatever you want to do. If you don't do that properly, as you shoot under recoil, that tenon will loosen up and it will start to move. So that's where people get slop in the handguard is that tenon has worked free and it's sliding back and forth ever so slightly. And that would cause your handguard to interface with the barrel back and forth. So these tensioning screws, if you don't stake that tenon properly and don't set it properly, these will help prevent that from happening. So these are a, what size? These are a 5 64ths Allen. And obviously there are provided Allen wrenches. I just like using a screwdriver. That's just how I roll. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to reinstall the magazine tube spring and the end cap. Remember that this is under pressure. You need to be careful when doing it and uh, just slowly feed it back into the tube. Also, you can't do this if the magazine tube is set down onto that stud, so you've got to hold it up in the air a little bit and just feed the spring back in. It's not difficult, just work it a little bit at a time using both hands and then get your end cap. Make sure the big hole is oriented down so that the stud can interface with that properly and then drop it into place. Drop my screw into place and snug that up, get my screwdriver squared up in the hole so I don't mar the finish. Okay. 
Okay, and that is snug. Now next up, I'm going to install the tenon screws and then I will install the tensioning screws because if I tension it before I put the uh, tenon screws in, that could be a problem. And again, there is a supplied Allen with this, but this is a 3 seconds Allen screw. And I'll actually start these by hand first and I'm gonna drop this off of here. And I can see that my hand guard is not completely set. So what I'm gonna do is take a hammer and just lightly, there we go. It just moved a 16th of an inch, but that was enough to perfectly line it up with the, uh, the tenon holes. So now I'm just gonna set, start these by hand and just get that in there. Got one, flip it over. Go ahead and get that on the bit. And one nice addition they did is they made the hole just a little bit bigger so you can work the handguard up and down to fit much easier. It, uh, it is a nice addition, I think, because you know not all these rifles are made exactly the same. There are slight tolerance differences and uh, having those little variations in this helps everything fit much much better so there's that one and there's that one now we are going to install the uh the set screws and guys when installing the set screws i'm going to use this little stubby screwdriver uh you would be wise to use the allen if you're not used to it you don't want to use something big like this because you can apply way too much torque if you apply too much torque, you can damage the handguard, you can strip it out, you could damage the screws. You know, this is not meant to be a rock solid, you know, tight, tight, tight fit. So by using something like this, you're, if you've got any strength in you at all, you will very quickly strip these out because it is aluminum. So you don't want to over torque it. Know your limitations. And uh, if you're not used to doing this kind of stuff, definitely use the supplied Allen screws or Allen wrenches make life a lot easier for you in the long run. So I'm gonna start at the receiver end and I am screwing counterclockwise until I feel that thread catch and then I will run it in. That way I don't worry about stripping it out. And again, guys, this is something once you get everything set, I would blue Loctite it so that it, uh, it stays in place. You don't want these coming loose and falling out and I'll shoot it some not Loctited, obviously, because of all that I'm doing, and I'll just keep checking them to make sure they are tight. Okay, get that going. And again, I'm gonna turn it backwards until I feel that thread drop in, and then run it on home. Okay, flip it over to the other side. And one more at the rear of the handguard. Well guys, that's all there is to this install. Like I said, this is extremely easy. The hardest part is sanding down that tenon. It's time consuming, it's monotonous, and it's not really that difficult. It's just stainless doesn't go easily. So it takes a little time with that sandpaper to work it down. You could use something powered like a belt sander or something like that, you know, a fixed one, but there is no way I would do that because it's so easy to take too much and then you're screwed. You got to order a new tenon because you went too far with it. So take your time, do it by hand. It took me maybe 15 minutes to do that. And you know, it's not that difficult. It, take your time with it. It's a rock solid installation. I love the way it looks, love the way it feels and uh, definitely a great addition to any rifle, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give us a big thumbs up for a like. Hit that subscribe button and share us with your friends. Have a good one, guys.